All right, uh, back here live at the Conservative Party convention as it's uh, now winding down, officially closed uh, after a lot of work got done here, a lot of debate over policy. And, and let me start there with my three MPs, and we'll bring in Michelle Rempel, Andrew Shear, and Elisa Ray. Good to see you all. Thanks, Thanks for, for having uh, us. Thanks for having us. Talk to me. Uh, we just finished hearing a conversation about, uh, I suppose, a, a significant policy move by the party today, which is uh, to step away from opposition against same-sex marriage. And to be clear, wh what it is is a removal in the party policy of a definition of marriage as between a, one man and one woman. Uh, that gets stricken uh, from, from the policy. So what exactly, how should we interpret what happened here today with that policy, Michelle? I think Canadians can wake up tomorrow knowing that all major political parties in this country um, support uh, equality in this area. Uh, there was an overwhelming uh, majority of delegates that voted in favor of this and uh, I think it just, it's just updating our policy declaration frankly to uh, reflect something that has been law of the land for over 10 years. Uh, Andrew Scheer, I know that uh, we talked about this this morning when we signed on early this morning and uh, you mentioned that you had, uh, you had uh, voted to maintain, you had voted against the, the idea of same-sex marriage before, and, but you've, you've come around uh, to a different position. Uh, is that fair? Well, I, I don't know if it's about... I don't know Perhaps it's not a personal of, position, but yeah, where the party should be on. It's not more of a, a change of position. It's more just a recognition. We, we had two votes in the House of Commons. We had two elections where this was a central issue. Canadians had their say in 2004 and 2006. It's been almost 10 years, uh, if, if not more, uh, since that this, uh, this has been legal. And I think, as Michelle said, this is uh, the membership today chose to uh, recognize the, the reality that is the law in Canada. And we're f we've got a policy resolution. Uh, we have a policy document that has to be uh, reflective of that. Lisa Raid, what's your view on what happened today with that resolution? I think it's awesome. I'm really happy. Lots of congrats to Michelle for working at So Hard from Alberta. And, you know... Peter, when we had that really long election for 79 days, we got a lot of time to spend with our constituents. This wasn't an issue for them. This wasn't something that was foremost in their minds. They care about the economy and jobs and safety and security and those kinds of things. So my EDA decided that this was the right way to go, and I was proud to vote in favor of the resolution. Um, we did hear some people on the floor saying, we've heard it from delegates, uh, there will be consequences, they suggest, that you will lose so-called social conservatives in the party uh, who will leave over this. Um, are you worried about that consequence? I think that, uh, you know, our party has always enshrined equal rights, and it's, it's right in our founding document. Um, the, the resolution itself also firmly entrenched the rights for religious organizations to practice as they see fit. Um, so, you know, I, I think one of the big things, the greatest thing about the Conservative Party of Canada is that we encapsulate a lot of Canadians and um, I think a lot of people who have very strong faith in this country understand that part of our pluralism is equal rights for all and to me this is uh, just a reflection of Canadian pluralism right in our policy document. Andrew Shear, do you think this has the potential to drive away uh, party members? I, I think because as you mentioned when you introduced the topic it wasn't uh, it wasn't the Conservative Party taking a new position on marriage it was just dele deleting a clause that mm. for, for the, in the minds of many had had become a little bit anachronistic you know this was an issue in 04 and 06 and there were, as I said two elections on it so it's more just taking that out there are lots of uh, very important family friendly policies in our document we had great a great resolution to protect the rights of conscience for medical practitioners we were the party that uh, you know brought an in income splitting uh, a firm parent parental choice for how they raise their kids and supporting their child care needs uh, you know I, I could probably rattle off a, a, a dozen or so more that that uh, are good re there are many different types of conservatives and and I think these what these conventions do is we try to find those areas that we can all agree on that we can present to Canadians and uh, and move forward. You worried about uh, supporters leaving the Conservative Party? Or? Well, if you watch the votes today, there's a number of times that we ended up going those little keypads so that we couldn't tell by the cards how people were thinking. A lot of votes were lost and a lot of votes were won. I voted against some stuff. I voted in favor of some stuff. But I'm not going to take my principles and go home and leave the party. And that's what we do here. We have these open debates and you go along with what the what the majority says. That's part of our policy. That's part of being part of the team. You know, and I, I want to add to this. Um, I wouldn't focus this conversation on losing support. I think what I'm taking out of this convention and this vote too is that our party is ready to inspire Canadians and gain supporters. Uh, you know, I think I didn't know what to expect coming here from our delegates. I don't know about you guys. Like, I'm just, I'm like fired up coming out of this. And I think that. 
and I think that the policies that we passed here today, I think actually can reach out and inspire a lot of Canadians to come into our fold. Uh, let's talk about uh, where you go from here. Convention's over. You go back to Ottawa. Uh, yeah. We all have a. I think we're all going to have another long night on on a Monday. Long we got day on Monday. committee of the whole. Be Way busy. to go, House committee of the whole with yeah. the uh, <laughs> the minister of finance. Uh, did, did Andrew fight for that for you, Lisa? Yeah. Great, so you could have you there till midnight on and Monday. I, I it one a.m. Monday after. Is it one a.m.? Oh, lovely. A. Okay. It's okay. He's uh, going to be there with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, what do you take away from this convention? You know, you talk about being fired up. Um, the next big thing for the party, obviously, is to, is to pick a leader, and that's going to be from now till this time next year. Uh, and we'll all wait to hear whether Andrew Shear's in and whether Lisa Raitt's in, and maybe whether Michelle Rempel might be in. <laughs> Are you here? To, you're not in? You're not decided? You, you know, know what? Um, I think uh, you, you talk about what we're going to take away out of here, and... For me, I just. Well, before I'm that I said, are you going to? But then I said, are you going to run? You have to. You should. You should I'm going to get to them. On my colleagues uh, I'll here get to them see too. what they're doing. Uh, We've got two very strong candidates I will. here. I will. So, <laughs> great. So that there, I evaded your question. You on to where, the next. You evaded the question. Yes. Andrew Shear? Uh, on on what I take away uh, from the on, convention? Well, on, on possible leadership. Did, oh, yeah. did anything? Did anything influence your possible plans by what you saw here this weekend? Uh, look, what I saw this week was was uh, so encouraging. We. You know, we had a difficult election, and sometimes after th that type of defeat, uh, the base is demoralized. The activists are, you know, get a little bit disengaged. But we saw so many new yeah. people, people I've never seen before, so many yeah. young people, yeah. uh, people of uh, diverse ethnic backgrounds come together and say, listen, uh, we need to start the rebuilding immediately. We, we can't wait a couple years to get our oomph back. We need to start right away. Yeah. And I think, I don't know about you guys, I'm fired up to go back yes. next week. And, uh, Committee of the whole. Yeah. Well, it, it, and, and it feels, it does look at for, from a, from a, a journalist perspective who's covered a lot of conventions. It, it feels different in the sense that uh, it's it was it's been very open. Uh, I can say that our viewers can see that because we've been sort of at everything, uh, which is a change from a lot of conservative conventions in the past. Uh, so uh, there seems to be that uh, a, a certain uh, openness. And the other thing I've, I've, people say to me is they're surprised at what what we call the pivot from the election loss. Uh, sometimes that can take a long time uh, to get sort of back in fighting trim, especially with an election a long way off. Yeah. But they talk about a, a lot of delegates talk to me here about a pivot that it, we've seemed to move, turn the corner fairly quickly from having lost to okay, what do we do next and how do we get there? Do you feel that? You know what I felt? I what I was really proud of is we didn't spend an entire convention bashing the other two parties. We talked about ourselves. We talked about what we want to accomplish, what we want to do, who we want to attract, how we're going to get on with it. We did the autopsy to determine what happened, and we're moving forward. And I think it's such a mature way to deal with the loss, and it's inspiring to move forward in a collective. And that's what we are now. We're a real collective. And, yeah, sure. and you, you talked about the openness, and maybe to link back to your first question about you know all the many different kinds of conservatives that, that come in. So many other parties start off these debates by exclu excluding anyone who has a, an alternate view. Who, you know, you're not even allowed to hold certain views in the Liberal Party and the NDP. What we say to them is buy a membership, go to your EDA, get elected as a delegate, come to the convention, have your fight, have your say, and then respect the result. And I think that's what we saw. We, we saw a very open process of participants from all over the country, different walks of life came and had their say. And there's room, there's, there are a lot of different kinds of conservatives and they're all welcome and they're all part of the team. I don't think I've ever been at a convention where uh, when a party loses an election, uh, they hold a breakout room and allow the media and, and watch them beat themselves up. And I, and I say that, I say that, Clinical. yeah, I say that, yeah, right. I, I, that's what I mean. I mean, to, to expose that yeah. open conversation about how badly it hurt and who yeah. might have been responsible for it and where they went wrong. Um, cathartic to have that for a party that's gone through that process? I'm just excited. Like, I, I, what Andrew said was absolutely right. We have such a diversity of viewpoints in this party. And I think that when you can take a public policy challenge or an issue and, and expose it to different viewpoints and say, okay, what is the best solution? That's what's going to inspire Canadians. And frankly, Canada needs the Conservative Party of Canada. There needs to be a strong opposition. Uh, you know, and again, I, I, I'm not going to do compare and contrast here, but what I'm leaving out of here is a, with a clear mandate from our delegates and our members to make sure that we're presenting an, a strong, alternative, viable vision for our country that holds the government to account. And I'm ready to do that on Monday. Let's go. All right. Uh, well, I'll be back there Monday with all of you. So uh, certainly appreciate your time today. And uh, uh, 
thanks for making uh, everything accessible and open. Uh, on our behalf at CPAC, uh, we're always, this is what we do, and yeah. uh, it's always nice when uh, it's happy to have us, you're happy to have us here, so we'll see you back in town.